pharyngeal CPAP in the paediatric patient with respiratory failure. There's a pharyngeal CPAP distinct from nasal CPAP is when you use an airway device to deliver positive pressure to the nasopharynx directly. Nasal CPAP delivers it only to the nostril. Nasopharyngeal CPAP is useful in the paediatric patient in respiratory failure that is failing on say high flow humidified air or oxygen at 2 litres per kilo per minute but that you want to try avoid intubating and ventilating and if you can reliably de deliver positive pressure to the nasopharynx uh, you might be able to avoid that. So first of all we'll talk about the equipment that you need. You'll need an endotracheal tube and in a patient this age of three, three and a half is probably adequate. You'll need some lubrication for the insertion of the tube, some pre-cut strips of, in this case we have leucoplast, two strips cut as trousers, and a strip of leucoplast elastic with a two centimetre stick in the middle. You need a piece of string about yay long, two segments of either duoderm or comfeel, and a device for delivering positive pressure, which in this case we're going to demonstrate the easy pack, which is useful for transport. So the first step is measuring the airway device and the length. So like any nasopharyngeal airway, measure from the tragus to the nostril, and in this case it's about 8 centimetres. And at 8 centimetres, with a very firm knot, mark that length. It's very important to get that tight, otherwise the tube will migrate in and out. The next step is to make sure that the patient's cheeks are dry and clean and then the tegoderm is placed. Sorry, the duoderm or the comfeel is placed. This patient often has it on. When inserting the tube, it's very important to use a lot of lubrication, or at least sufficient amount to minimise the risk of bleeding or trauma. And then the principle with any nasal airway is gentle, constant downwards pressure, directly down, not angled up, but directly down. If it doesn't go easily in one nostril, you can always try the other. Keep in mind that a certain subset of paediatric patients, no airway will be passable. Patients with coanal atresia, for example. Um, sometimes you might just need to use a smaller tube. All right, so gentle downward pressure. And then get the assistant to hold the string down tight. This part is important. And then grab the first trouser leg. And start on the side opposite from the nostril where the tube is in. And the lower trouser goes directly across the upper lip, as it like a moustache, but avoid contacting the soft uh, mucosa of the lip. And this top trouser goes across the bridge of the nose, all the way around, and grab the tube right at the base. wrap it around. The second trouser starts on the opposite side it's important not to catch the eyelashes and the trouser that goes straight across in this 
instance is the top trouser goes across the bridge of the nose and then it's the bottom trouser that grabs the tube tightly at the bottom the next step is the Plucoplast elastic that goes across the entire tape. <clears throat> and you can see your tube is secure. And it's important not to cut the length of the tube too early. With this particular device, the EasyPack, there's a little bit of weight to this. When it's connected, the pressure is determined by the amount of flow. So if I turn it up to 10 litres at the gas outlet, you'll see that the pressure delivered is about 8 to 9 centimetres of water. Because of the weight of this device, if this is cut too short, Often the weight can pull the endotracheal tube and in these patients there's often quite a, quite a large amount of secretions which loosens up this tape. So if there's too much weight you can sometimes pull the endotracheal tube out. So leaving enough length enables it to either sit on the chest or on the side of the patient. And that's it, that's the nasopharyngeal CPAP in the paediatric patient.